Hey guys, it's me again. I hope you're all doing fine. Now it's been a couple of days since I uploaded my last video and considering the amount of subscribers I have at the moment, it did fine I'll say. Thank you for watching though. Your support is very much appreciated. Now while I was thinking about an idea for the next video, I saw the short video by Edward Michaelow, who by the way is an awesome VFX artist. So he recreated this effect that Red Giant had made a tutorial about, but of course he added his own flair to it so it got viral. But what Red Giant and Edward did was use a paid plugin from Red Giant itself called Chromatic Displacement. Now knowing the fact that a lot of people, including me, would not be able to afford to buy the third party plugin by Red Giant, I thought to myself, could I do it by using free effects available right into After Effects? So I immediately shot a shitty video on my phone and spent like a night figuring it out. I tried experimenting with combination of effects like blobby lies, ripple pulse, bulge, turbulent displays, etc. TLDR, I couldn't and I gave up for the night. The next day, I shot another video, this time with a camera for convenience sake, and I got back to figuring it out. So I thought to myself, let's tackle this problem using the little brain I've got left. So what's the final effect basically consisting of? Number one, those turbulent distortions in 3D space, and number two, chromatic aberrations, but only in the area with distortion. Now with that in mind, I was able to figure it out. Now the basic application is pretty much the same as the Red Giant's tutorial. Step 1. Shoot the video with your subject in it that you're trying to emit 3D distortions from. Now I would prefer a video with less motion blur cause motion blur messes up your 3D track. Now I'm going to use the video of this old ass subwoofer at my parents home cause I left my bluetooth speaker at my place when I was coming back home before the lockdown started. Step 2. Import the footage into After Effects. Step 3. Rewatch my first 3D tracking video, use the tricks from that video and try to get a better track out of your footage. Create a camera as well as a solid on the surface of the object that you're trying to emit distortions from. Step 4. Press Ctrl Command Y and create a new white solid. Now using the elliptical mask tool, by pressing Ctrl and Shift together, create a perfectly centered circle. Now once again by pressing Ctrl and Shift together, create another perfectly centered circle. Now change the masking mode of the smaller circle to subtract. Now you have a ring. Pre-compose the solid and name it ring element. Step 5. Convert your ring element layer into a 3D layer. Do you see this pick whip icon over here? If you don't, press this button and you'll see it. While pressing shift, click and drag the pick whip icon from the element layer to the solid that we created earlier. Now you'll see that the ring element layer has automatically snapped to the solid. Now remove the solid from the parent layer cause it's no more needed. Step 6. Select your ring element layer, press P to open position, click the stopwatch button and create the keyframe at the very beginning of the comp. Now move forward a couple of frames and increase the Z value enough that the ring element is not visible in your scene. Now select the two keyframes, press F9 and open the graph editor. Make your graph look like this so the animation looks a little intense and quick. Now duplicate this element as many times as you want to sync it to the beats of your music. Now you have the spine of the effect ready. Step 7. Select all the ring elements and the camera and pre-compose them, moving all the attributes to a new comp and name it displacement map. Open the displacement map and create a new black solid and place it on the bottom of all layers. Select all layers and pre-compose them again. Name it pain in the ass. Create another black solid and place it at the bottom of the layers. Now in the effect menu, search for Gaussian blur. Drag and drop the effect on the pain in the ass layer and increase the amount to like 5 or 10. Now go back to the main comp, solo out the displacement map layer. Now you can either use this layer directly as your displacement map if your PC is powerful enough to handle it. But I am using a laptop. So I'll render it out first and re-import it to use it as a displacement map layer. So press Ctrl M and press render to render it out. Re-import it back into your comp and hide it. Step 8. Select your main video and search for displacement map effect in effects and presets. Drag and drop the effect on your main video. Set the source to the displacement map layer you either imported in or you just left as is. Now increase the horizontal and vertical displacement to around 20. The values that work for me were 16 and 24. You can most definitely play with those values. Now we have successfully gotten distortion in our effect. All that left is some chromatic aberration. To do that, all you have to do is duplicate your original footage, remove the displacement map effect and drop the VR chromatic aberration effect on it. Make sure your project has enabled GPU rendering by going into file, project settings, enable GPU rendering, move the layer just below the displacement map layer and set the mat to luma mat. Now this will only allow the effect to appear in the places where there is white in displacement map layer. 
and there you have it you have the whole effect ready with both distortions and chromatic aberrations in the scene make sure to add a little flair of your own and hopefully it gets viral Alright, this is it for this episode. I hope you liked it and use these techniques in much more creative way than I just did. If you didn't like the video, press the dislike button. If you maybe found some value in it, press the like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. Until next time, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Okay. Hey, 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 hey.